Uh, thanks, Sean. I think everyone knows uh, we're here to announce the um, signing of David Dahl, uh, its free agent contract, and also the acquisition of uh, Jose Corniel in a trade for uh, Rafael Montero. Um, as far as Dahl, we're super excited to add David to the organization. Uh, we are uh, very excited about what he brings. Um, this is a player who has uh, been very successful at the major league level. Um, he still is under team control for the next few years and we think will be a, a, a valuable addition to our franchise moving forward and what we want to accomplish. Um, he has hit everywhere he's been and uh, certainly as he uh, recovers from shoulder surgery this offseason, we're confident in his ability to be ready for opening day or close there too. And, uh, and when he's healthy, we expect a performance um, in line with where he's been throughout his career. So uh, very excited about David. I think it'd be a great addition to our team and uh, push us forward towards our goals of winning a championship. Uh, regarding Jose Corniel, uh, he's a player who, a uh, young player uh, with a great right arm uh, from the Dominican Republic, somebody who's been highly touted and uh, we think it uh, adds a lot of depth to our system, somebody that we can continue to develop and uh, hopefully we'll be part of a uh, championship piece down the line as well. Okay, so we'll take questions. You can just raise your hand for this one. TR? Mr. Young, as far as Corniel is concerned, how does he profile as a pitcher? And I know it's, it's 17 years old, that's difficult, but how does he profile and what is his repertoire at this point, knowing that it's probably going to change? Look, I think that, um, TR, it's hard to, to project exactly where he'll be, but I think that right now we see, and the industry sees, a, a, a right-handed pitcher with um, a, a solid build, a strong right arm, a very lively fastball. There's probably more in the tank there as we continue to, uh, as he continues to grow, grow and mature. Um, he's got a, a good feel for pitching, um, a good breaking ball. And uh, certainly we, we look forward to continuing to, uh, to, to, to get to see him in person, to work with him and continue to enhance what we in the industry has seen as a real good prospect. Uh, Chris, um, how, how aggressive were the Rangers in pursuing him as an amateur free agent, do you know? Uh, TR, I know that the Rangers did have a strong interest in him as an amateur free agent coming out of the DR. Uh, you know, the extent to which I, I can't answer for sure. Um, you know, as you know, I'm a week in here, so I'm still learning the background on things. So I apologize for, for that. I do know that that has been conveyed in our talks um, with Seattle that, that we did have strong interest uh, when he was coming out as an amateur. Well, I'm sure that you guys consulted with your Dominican people, your Latin American people when you... Uh, consider this trade, correct? No, no doubt about it. I mean, that's, that's, some, that's, uh, that's part of our internal process. We consulted with a lot of different people and certainly, um, again, this is someone that we have had interest in in the past and uh, are very excited about moving forward as a part of our organization. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, John Blake. Next question, please. Jeff. Hey, Chris, uh, you guys have been really busy like a lot busier than, than most other clubs. So what, what, what uh, is it opportunity? Is it, uh, was it a, a game plan to, to get in and, and, and get who you wanted? And I'm just curious, because it seems like a pretty slow market otherwise. Yeah, you know, Jeff, I think that opportunity comes at different times for different teams. And I think as we've evaluated uh, <laughs> where we are as a club and where we want to go, uh, certainly we've seen the opportunity to acquire players um, that we feel like fit uh, – what we want to accomplish. And I think that that is really important right now to strike when there is that opportunity. It certainly has come uh, very quickly this week, um, but I, I'm very, I couldn't be more excited about the moves that we've made and the future of our franchise. I think that each piece is a piece towards uh, what we are trying to do in, in terms of uh, building a championship club, a championship mentality. And uh, I think that these are uh, players that, um, you know, we expect to be part of our organization for years to come. Is, does the the signing of Dahl indicate that Willie Calhoun is going to be the designated hitter? Look, I think that uh, for Willie, we have expectations that he can play the outfield. I think that um, as of now, we have a very good defensive outfield uh, with, um, you know, with the addition of David. 
certainly Willie, um, you know, we would like him to be as versatile as possible. And, uh, you know, I think that at 25 years old to say that um, one player is going to be strictly a DH, uh, you know, I, I don't think we're ready to, to project that just yet. Um, but I think that given where we are, I think there'll be some rotation. I think that you will see, uh, you know, David will likely spend some days at DH as well. And, and Willie perhaps in the outfield, but look, um, you know, the best players are going to play and that's the culture that we're going to create, that we're going to continue to build. And, uh, and um, you know, it, it will be based on performance. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Levi. Hey, Chris. Um, so as far as moving Montero goes, I mean, he, he, was the, he was the closer last year. And as we, we talked to John a few days ago, and he mentioned that a lot of these reliever moves generally happen sort of mid-season after the free agent market shakes out. Was this kind of just something you guys had to make a move from the bullpen because you had so many arms there? And so then you begin to sort of shop him and take the best deal? Or were you looking for Corneal and it just happened to work out that they wanted a, a relief pitcher? Yeah, Levi, I think that all things considered, I think understanding what the market has been for relief pitching at the trade deadline, uh, evaluating where we are with, with uh, Rafael Montero, um, certainly I think it's a real success story for the, for the franchise. Um, this is a player that was a minor league free agent who came in, who's made valuable contributions over the last couple seasons. And, uh, you know, in, in turn, we are now getting two prospects, uh, which will likely be a part of the organization for years to come. So I think that this is a, in a lot of ways, a real success story. It's a tribute to our medical department who has done a great job in, in rehabbing him. And then our scouts in identifying him and then our, our um, pitching instructors and in, in maximizing his performance. And I think as we evaluated, we felt like this was an opportunity to uh, create some depth at the minor league level. Certainly we have great confidence in uh, the, some of the back end arms we have right now. But again, um, it, it, I, I will reiterate that um, this is a performance-based game, and uh, whoever ends up closing will be based on performance. And uh, we look forward to you know open competition for that role um, throughout spring training and even into the season. Right on. Thank you, Evan. Chris, in Lowe and Dahl, is there anything that um, constitutes a profile? Is there a profile of player? that the Rangers are now looking for, particularly as far as hitters go? Well, Evan, I think that uh, they're both really, really good hitters who have performed at the, uh, at the minor league level, at the major league level. I think certainly with Dahl, probably a little bit longer track record. Uh, but with Lowe, he is, uh, he's also hit at the minor league level. And I think we have, um, you know, expectations that, he's, that it's going to translate to the big league level. And, uh, and you know, again, um, this is an opportunity for the organization to – uh, to put in place a couple pieces that are, are going to be important for, uh, for where we're headed. And we think that these two are, are great um, players who are going to make real contributions to a championship team uh, within a few years. But and inside the game, is there, is there any kind of common denominator to be looking for with, with these guys in terms of elements that they actually have that, that this team has, has, has lacked the last couple of years in approach? You know, Evan, I, I, um, that's a tough question to say. I mean, I wouldn't say – I think what we're profiling is winning good players. And that's to us what we've identified in both of these players. And um, players who are competitive, players who are going to maximize their potential. And I think more so than any one certain characteristic, I think that's what we're looking for is that championship mentality. And as we get that across 26 players um, and, and even more so into the minor league system, um, we're going to create a really, really good team. And uh, I'm excited that, uh, of where we are and where we're headed. I think these are two pieces um, that are, you know, a good start in that process. And I think it's uh, something to, to continue to build on. Let me ask you one um, unfair question, the first of many, I suppose. Um, you're in a unique situation having been in the MLB offices and with, with reports today about concerns about when the, the season would start. Um, do you have any perspective on that? The, in, in your mind, you were so close on the protocols. Is Do we need to push the, the, the start date back a little bit? You know, 
Well, I was uh, part of writing uh, aspects of the protocols. The, the, my area of expertise, Evan, was limited to uh, really on-field. And, um, you know, I'm confident in saying that we did not have any on-field transmission last year. Uh, so in, in a lot of ways, I will take some of the credit for that. But uh, I, I do not want to get into the medical field. That's certainly uh, a conversation for people much more qualified and intelligent than I am to speak to the virus and, and the timing and the vaccination and everything. Uh, but I think from our standpoint, we are preparing as though uh, the season will, will begin, we'll be in spring training in February. And I think we can always push that back if, if there is a, a timeline change. Thank you, Chris. Next question, John Radigan. Hey, Chris. Um, so obviously you had some discussions, you know, prior to coming on board with how active the team might be. But have even you been surprised by how much activity there has been and by how much you have done and been able to do uh, in your first week on the job? Yeah, John, in a lot of ways, I'm getting thrown into the fire, but I actually think it's a great thing to hit the ground running. I think this is, uh, for me, um, accelerating the learning curve, um, really to come in and be part of the process that we have internally to get a firsthand look on several different moves that we've made already. Uh, from the Rule 5 draft to the, the um, three trades that we've, we've made. Um, you, you could say that JD's had his most active week in uh, Ranger history by some degree. And if you throw in adding a general manager to that. So, um, you know, yes, it's been wonderful for me. I, I really am excited about um, some of the things I've seen. And uh, I think that, um, you know, these are all positive moves. And, uh, and I look forward to hopefully, um, you know, being part of many more as we continue to improve our team. Uh, throughout this year and years beyond. Yeah, and I guess when you join at the time of the, in this case, virtual winter meetings, you expect at least a certain amount. But like that very first night, right? Was it the very first night you were on the job that you made the Lynn trade at midnight? The, the Lynn trade, I think, was officially made the first day, uh, the first official day on the job. But, um, but yes, look, and, and I'll be candid that a lot of the groundwork for these moves was made prior to my arrival. Uh, certainly, I've been looped in quickly and been part of every discussion. Um, since since joining, but uh, you know we have really good people in place who have uh, been part of evaluating these moves, and I um, am here to sort of enhance those conversations. and uh, And I think that we're all on the same page as far as what we see and where this organization's headed, and it's pretty exciting. Excellent, thanks, Chris. CJ. Hey, Chris. Um, so David Dahl said that his shoulder was actually bothering him last January, didn't report it to the team, thought he could play through it, and then had that surgery uh, in September. Are you guys as simply just chalking up his 2020 season to him probably trying to play through that injury? Yeah, CJ, you know as well as I do that this game's hard enough when you're healthy, much less if you have some, some type of nagging injury. And uh, certainly his was one that, was, uh, that warranted having surgery. Uh, we, we've done a lot of uh, diligence um, with our medical staff. We're very, very confident in where he is in his uh, rehab progression right now. We're, uh, we're excited to get him paired up with our medical staff, our team of, of uh, medical experts, and um, really uh, accelerate his, his uh, rehab, his recovery. We're hopeful that by opening day, he'll be ready. Um, but, you know, I, I want to reiterate the expectation here is that when David Dahl is ready, he's 100% ready, and he's going to make great contributions to our team. Um, and so if that means it's a couple weeks into the season, so be it. But I think given where we are right now in our evaluation, we're pretty confident that that's the timeline. So along those lines, I imagine there was times in your career where you probably played through an injury or you had a teammate that played through an injury and you appreciated that as a teammate. I'm guessing that maybe that changes for you a little bit now in the position that you're in as far as any message that you would want the guys to have in regards to trying to play through any injuries. Yeah, CJ, it's a fine line, right? And when injuries start to really uh, inhibit your performance that, and it's costing the team, then you certainly have to step back and say, I need to do what's right for the team. And, uh, and um, as, I re as I said, the, the game is hard enough when you're healthy, much less when you're hurt. So I do have great appreciation for players and their toughness and what it takes on a daily basis. Uh, but that said, you know, one of my themes is this is a performance-based game. And if your injury is, is keeping you from performing, then certainly we need to take a look at it and address it. So, um, you know, in, in the end, that's what we'll do. We, I, we have a great medical team uh, in place. And I think that, um, you know, for David coming here, it's going to be a great opportunity, a change of scenery. And our expectation is he's going to return to form. 
Last one uh, regarding pitching and the addition of any pitching from the outside. JD talked about trying to find maybe some veterans to help eat up some innings. Uh, could be in the bullpen as well as the rotation. I know you weren't here last year and didn't see the ballpark, but are you guys? Do you guys have uh, a kind of pitcher in mind in the sense that what kind of pitcher fits the ballpark, but then also based on the team that's going to be behind him? If you're looking on some of those short-term deals. Yeah, I, I think to some degree, but I think that we're also looking for opportune, uh, opportunistic signings where uh, we can acquire pitchers that what I call sort of, of um, a winning mindset and uh, in pedigree. Uh, players who are going to come in, compete, who, um, who, who aren't afraid of the challenges ahead. Underdogs who are out to prove something, who want to be part of building a, a, a real um, successful culture, championship culture. And uh, to me, that's, that's the most important aspect here. Um, I always say that a pitcher doesn't make uh, a ballpark doesn't make a pitcher. Um, a, a good pitcher can compete and win anywhere, and that's what we're looking for. Awesome, thank you. Anything else? Take a few more. Uh, Levi, back to you. You talk about those uh, pitchers that are willing to come in and compete in underdogs. Where does where does Jarrell Cotton fit on that scale? Look, I think Jarrell is someone who uh, also has, has dealt with injury, um, certainly uh, has had a lot of promise throughout his career. We think that he's someone who can come in and, uh, and certainly compete, um, signing a non-roster deal. Uh, we're excited about him. We, we look forward to, uh, to working with him and, and giving him an opportunity. I think that's one of the beauties of, of our situation right now is there is a, a lot of opportunity. And as a player who is hungry and, and wants to come out and prove himself, uh, certainly this is a good spot. Is he... From what I was able to find, you know, with no minor leagues last year, it was just kind of a ghost. So how, how do you guys evaluate that signing? Is it sort of based on what you saw before or was there information you guys were able to get from the Cubs or how did that, how did that process go? Yeah, Levi, it's all things considered. It's, it's relying on our, uh, our, our reports, um, our scouts who have seen him. Um, certainly the industry is in a unique position with no minor league baseball to rely on last year. Uh, but I think that we trust um, that, you know, this is still a player who uh, is, is relatively young, has a lot of upside, has not maximized his potential yet. And uh, we're excited to, to get him in the organization and, and help try to push him to, uh, to, to reach his ceiling. And um, if he does, he's going to make contributions to the Texas Rangers. And I think that's, um, you know, that's why we signed him. Thank you. Other questions? A couple more. Jeff? Uh, uh, the rotation's been mentioned. Uh, what other areas are, are still in, in play here? Catcher, third base, uh, anything yeah, else? I think you hit it. I mean, I think those are the main areas at this point. Um, look, it's still uh, mid-December. It's early. Um, the market is still evolving. And I think that we're going to continue to be op opportunistic as we move forward. And um, But those are certainly areas that we have our eye on. And, uh, and again, um, looking for you know players who want to come in and compete and, and help um, build something special here. And uh, – and it's, it really is a great opportunity. I've been a player on the other side of this. I've seen, um, you know, it's kind of you evaluate the market, you evaluate teams. And I think this is a place where uh, it could be a real fit for a lot of, a lot of people who, uh, who are, you know, really hungry and want to come in and prove themselves. What, what move are you guys going to announce tomorrow? Um, to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anything else for Chris?